Hey guys, in this episode of PHP Front to Back, we're going to be working with files and folders and file paths. All right, this is actually a very powerful uh, part of PHP is, is working with the file system and being able to write to files and, and create them and read from them and so on. So uh, I've created a new folder called Website 7 in the PHP Sandbox and I just have an empty index PHP file. All right, so in here I'm going to just put in my PHP tags. And first thing we're going to do is look at a couple functions that work with file um, file paths. So let's say we want to return the file name uh, with the file extension. So I'm just going to create a variable here with a path to a file. So we'll say slash dir1 slash uh, we'll just call this my file dot PHP. All right. So let's say we want to get the file name. So we could use a function called base name. And I'm going to just comment this file really good so you guys have this as a reference. So this is going to return file name. So we'll say echo base name and we'll pass in the path. OK, we'll open it up over here. Localhost PHP sandbox website seven. And we get my file dot PHP. OK, so it looked at this. It knows that this is the path. It knows that this is the file name. All right. Now, if we wanted to get just the file name without the PHP extension, we can do that as well. We'll say return file name without extension. So for that, we could just we'll just say echo base name path and then we'll just add another parameter and say dot PHP. So let's just comment this out here and save that and reload and we just get my file. OK, so that's how you can get it without the file extension. All right. So the next function we're going to look at is dir name. And what that will do is it will return the directory name from the path. So let's say echo dir name. And let's just put something in here. Uh, Actually, we'll just put that file. I mean, that path variable. OK, it's reload and we get slash dir one. So it looks at this. It knows again, this is the file name, but it gives us the path. OK, as opposed to base name, which gave us the file. So even if we were to put more than one level here, if we were to say do that. And reload, it'll give us dir zero dir one. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to create a file. So let's go in website seven. I'm going to create a text file. And from here, let's just say hello world. And we'll save this as file one dot txt. I don't know why it takes a couple seconds to create that. It's weird. OK, so let's. Um, Let's say we want to check to see if this if that file actually exists. So there's a function called file underscore exists that we can use. So file underscore exists and we're going to pass in here. File one dot txt. Actually, you know what I'll do is put a variable up here. And let's set that to file one dot txt and then I'll just put that in here. All right, so let's go ahead and reload that and we get a one. It's looking in the current directory for file one. If I were to change this to file two and reload, we're going to get false or nothing. OK, so you could put this in an if statement and check for it as well. OK, so that's file exists going to continue to comment this stuff out and let's uh, let's look at real path. OK, so what the, what real path will do is it gets the absolute path. So the, it gets the whole thing, not just the, the relative path. So let's say echo real path and we'll pass in file and reload and we get nothing. That's because there is no file to. So let's change that back to file one. And now you can see it gets 
from the absolute root. I'm on Windows, so it's looking in the C drive into XAMPP, HDDocs, PHP Sandbox, Website 7, and File1.txt. All right, now we have another function called isFile. And what that does is it checks to see if file. Okay, so let's do uh, echo is file file. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. That gives us a one, just like file exists. The difference between these is that we can use file exists for a folder as well. So if we create a new folder, we'll just call it uh, test and we run uh, let's say is file test and reload we get nothing we get false if we do file exists whoops file exists and reload we get one okay because it will it will return one even if it's a folder is file will not that's the difference all right so another thing we can do is we can check if a file is writable okay so let's do echo is underscore writable and we'll pass in our file variable which is file one dot text and reload and we get a one now if i go to my operating system and go to the file one dot text and i go to properties and then set it to read only and go back and reload we get false because now it's not writable okay let me just change that back and in addition to that you can also do is readable okay so if you had some kind of uh, permissions on that made the file not readable that's going to return uh, that's going to return false Another thing we can do is get the file size. So if we say echo and there's a function called file size. And we'll go and reload and we get 11. And if we go to that file and let's look at the properties here, you'll see that the size is 11 bytes. OK. So what I want to do now is give you some functions that can uh, manipulate the file system. Uh, we can create directories and files and copy them, rename them, do different things like that. So first one we'll take a look at will be to create a directory or folder. And that's going to be mkdir, just as you would do in the terminal. All right, so let's say make directory and let's see, I'm going to delete that test directory folder that we created and let's make one called testing okay so if we save that and we go and reload and now see over here a testing folder was just created so that's that pretty easy another thing that we can do is we can delete a directory so uh, the the rmdir command will delete a, a directory as long as there's no files in it so let's say rmdir testing and let's reload and you'll see that that is now deleted all right so this will remove directory if not empty or if empty sorry oops okay uh, let's see what else can we do here let's uh I don't want to get into creating a file just yet. Let's copy a file. So let's say we want to take file one TXT, which has hello world in it, and we want to copy it to another file or basically take it and create another file with it with the same content. So to do that, we can use the copy command. So let's do echo copy. And we'll take this takes two parameters. First one is going to be the file we want to copy. Second one is going to be the file we want to create from it. So we're going to take 
uh, file one and we're going to create file two with the same content. So let's reload. And now you can see it created file two dot text, which has hello world in it. All right. We can also rename a file. So let's say rename and we'll take file two dot text and let's rename it to my file dot text. Okay, we'll reload and now you can see file two has changed to my file dot text still has hello world in it. Okay, let's say rename file. Okay, we can also delete a file. And we can do that with the unlink command. So let's say unlink. And we'll pass in here my file dot txt. Go ahead and reload. And now my file txt is gone. So you can see we can do pretty much anything in terms of creating and, and copying and all that stuff. Now let's say we want to read what's in the file and output it onto the screen in our browser. So let's say uh, write, write from file to string. So for that we can use something called file get contents. So let's do echo file underscore get underscore contents and then the file name. I'm just going to put in the variable we have, which is file one dot text and we'll save that and reload and we get hello world. OK, so this will take whatever file we pass in and just echo it out into the browser. Now we can also write a string to the file. So let's do that. So for that, we can use uh, file put contents. Okay, it's going to take the file name and then it's going to take what we want to pass in. So let's say uh, goodbye world. Okay, we'll run that. And it, it, what it passes us back if we echo this out is I believe that's the file size. Let me just check that. Yeah, that's the file size. But if we look in file one now, you'll see goodbye world. Now, notice it didn't just add this to the file. It replaced what was there, which was hello world. Now, if we wanted to append to this instead of replace it, we have to do something a little different. So I'm going to go ahead and just put hello world back. And then what we'll do is first we'll get it. And then we'll append onto it and then put it back. So let's say uh, we'll say current and set that to file get contents. OK, and then what we'll do is take that current and then we'll append with dot equals. We'll append space and then goodbye world. And then what we have to do is put it back. So file put contents and then we're going to pass in here the file name and then current. OK, so let's go ahead and run that. And now if we go back to file one text, we get hello world, goodbye world, which I misspelled, but that's fine. All right, so that's what we have to do to append. Now, there's a lot of other things that you can do with files, um, but what I want to show you next is to use the, the um, F open command. So basically what that'll do is we, it allow us to put a file into a variable called a handle, and then we can run continuous functions on that handle. So let me give you an example. Um, let's say. Let's say we want to open a file for reading. So we could say um, handle and set that to F open and then we'll pass in the file name. OK, and that actually takes another parameter, which is 
what you want to do with it, whether you want to write to it, read to it, both. We're going to put an R because we want to read to it, read from it. And then we'll say data equals, and then we're going to use a command called fread, and then pass in the handle. And then we can pass in the file size. And pass in the file name like that. Okay, and then we'll take that data and let's just echo it. Reload and we get what we have written written in the file. I'm just going to fix that. Okay, so that is F open and F read. Now we can also write to a file this way. Let's say open file for uh, writing. So again, we're going to create a handle and set that to F open. Pass in the file name, except this time we want to write to it. And then let's see, we want to, uh, I guess we could create a variable called text and we'll just say, um, I don't know, John Doe. And then we can use F right. And we're going to pass in the handle and then pass in the text. And then you should also close the file when you're done. So for that, you can use F close and just pass in here the handle. Oops. All right, we should do that up here too. All right, I'm actually going to uh, let's let's not use file one. We can create the file from doing this as well. So instead of that, let's say file two dot txt. All right, so that should create the file, write to it, and then close it. So save and reload. And now over here, if you look, we have file2.txt, and it has John Doe in it. Okay, and we can continuously write to this if we want. So let's say we have uh, text equals Steve Smith. We could again do the F write. So now if we reload and go to file two, we get John Doe, Steve Smith. Now, if we wanted to put this on a new line, we could use uh, a new line character here. So um, actually, you know what? Let's use double quotes here, because if we use double quotes, we can put this right in like that. OK, backslash N We'll do the same thing here. OK, so we'll reload and go to file to text. And now you can see they're on different lines. All right, guys, so I think that's going to be it for now. You get quite a few different functions here that pertain to files and folders. Um, so I would I would encourage you to experiment with it. Uh, maybe create your own little application that logs data to a text file or something like that. Uh, maybe use a form, maybe create a form that you can make a post request and then have that data logged to the file or something like that. I don't know. I'm just giving you some ideas. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. Please leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And thanks for watching.